Week six of PFR school board tonight and uh, a big night, Wayne. Really a uh, historic night for one team that hasn't won for years. Yes, unbelievable. And I bet you if we ask the viewers uh, who weren't there, uh, yeah. who, what team it would be, nobody would guess. Team it. of the week got to be uh, Hammond Clark. 27 game losing streak since 2014 over tonight. Homecoming and what a homecoming it was for them. 28-21 over East Chicago. Congratulations to Nick yeah. Testa, yeah. LC boy, yeah. uh, who's now coaching them. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to them. Neither of us the saw this one coming. No. no. Big win for them. <laughs> All the scores and highlights coming up next on PFR School Board. Program support comes from NIPSCO. Honey, who is this guy? Oh, that's Frank. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Honey, why is Frank in our bedroom? He's showing us ways to save money. Plus, he'll even help us install LED bulbs and new shower heads. Oh, well, he is leaving before I shower, though, right? To schedule an energy assessment and learn more about energy usage, visit nipsco.com. Frank, could you hand me a towel? our school board on Lakeshore PBS and uh, it's a big night for Tommy because his alma mater is now off the hook. Yeah, very true, <laughs> very true. There was one record that we were kind of, <laughs> for four years, it's over. <laughs> Roosevelt, the last team to lose to Clark. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, somebody else gets that burden now. <laughs> All right, we start off highlight wise from over at Andrean. We talked last night about two teams that have been somewhat inconsistent this year. Munster and Andrean, and let's check out some of the highlights. Andrean looks like they're trying to battle for some consistency now. That's for sure. I mean, they, they played very, very well tonight. And we're pretty solid last week against uh, Lowell. Difference between last I mean, Hobart, week and excuse me. Hobart, yeah. yeah. Difference between last week and this week, they put some points on the board. Yeah. That always helps, always helps. And their defense really stepped up tonight mm -hmm. through a shutout. Yeah. Well, this is Munster. Uh, Zach Cammer right here, speaking of Andrean defense, Zach Cammer with a pick of Vinny Bravo, and he's going to take it all away. Some pick sixes tonight across Northwest Indiana. Yeah, how many did we get? Uh, we may have ended up with about five. <laughs> <laughs> like I was quarterbacking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice tackle there by Munster. That was Nick Fleischer with the catch. Here's Dylan Bullock with a nice run for the Stangs. And uh, oh, help me with this one. Good Bim. by Munster. A Dindu. A Dindu. Whoa. Yeah. A Dindu, okay. Bless you. Look at it right here. <laughs> there he is. A Dindu do. Yeah. He did. He did do it. Yep. All okay. right. Taking it to the house. Tyler Thomas there with a run. Here's Munster coming back with Diller, Dylan Bullock. And here's Tyler. This is Tyler Thomas. Right. Beautiful move. Mm. You get it to a guy on the outside, let him try to go against the defender one on one, and then try to get yards after the catch. So, a uh, nice effort tonight by Andrean. 34 0. They toss the shutout. Lowell and Munster KV Andrean next week. Revenge battle down in Cedar Lake tonight. Hanover Central hosting Whiting. Tough game for Whiting, or tough game for Hanover to have to bounce back from a tough loss to Boone Grove. Yeah, really tough game in. And, and you know, uh, Whiting, you know, was expected to win last year and Hanover went there and upset them. And Tommy and I had talked about the fact that this was circled on Whiting's calendar. Yeah, and last year, I think uh, Hanover out physicaled Whiting last yes. year, mm -hmm. which that's not gonna sit well with Coach Kane. No. And I <laughs> no. imagine he's probably brought that up recently since then, every, no, maybe every day I would since think. then. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but- Every uh, practice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's check out some of the highlights tonight. The Oilers and Hanover Central, the Wildcats tonight. Some camera work from that. We, you know, we got cameras everywhere. Yes, we did. Oh, there's a deflection and a pick for the Oilers. 
Oh, that might have some trouble in the backfield. You know, it's the second straight year this matchup winds up getting to the middle. There's it. There oh, it is. another pick, pick six, six right, right there. there. Can, he yep. play, can he play for the Bears? Though, <laughs> That's the one thing their DBs don't do is jump in front of a pass. That's right. Couldn't do any worse. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great pick. Uh, Hanover's offense is starting to struggle a little bit. Yeah, it is. And uh, people are starting to take uh, Lang away from the run game, uh, from making him throw, and uh, it's just not looking good. We Got talked it. about it, maybe a little bit of the Maceo defense, or the Maceo defense from last year, Maceo, Wayne. That's right. Yep, you got to have a plan B and a plan C when you get to the month of October. That's mandatory. That's right. Although they're throwing the ball a lot here. That's some good contain on his running. And Delang in the second half did pretty well from yes, what we did. heard. So yes. it's not like he was totally shut down. The young man came back and led his team, but came up short. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Wow. He's a man. 200 what? Huh? 250 pounds? 240 yeah. some pounds. Yeah. yeah. And then you get out and fresh in front of the rest of the list. Here he comes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, get in front of me. Go ahead, I dare you. <laughs> He's a two-way running back, folks, and that's oh, a load yeah. right there. That's going to be a load in the postseason when Whiting starts playing yes. teams their size. Exactly. Especially Dealing with in the cold. Yeah. I mean, hey, hey, it was 80 to something. I don't want to tackle him when it's 85 <laughs> either. <laughs> Forget about the cold. <laughs> And now you got the quarterback, and you know, there was a question mark about the Whiting quarterback situation, right. and this young man comes up with a big play. I think, you know, we, we jumped off the Whiting bandwagon, at least I did, after the Griffith game, but, you know, Griffith's out there. Griffith's, oh, uh, Griffith's playing like a 5A team right now. Yes. Now, you talk about a team that would do as well as the Bears. You yeah. put Griffiths in. <laughs> well, yeah, they're doing pretty Griffith, well. When Griffith and Lowell meet in the sectional, that could be the, the game of the year. 40 to 26 of Whiting over Hanover. Whiting's starting to get that running game going. Uh, we saw multiple backs there, some good blocking. Uh, and the Oilers will be at Calumet. Hanover Central playing at Wheeler next week. Speaking of Mr. Maceo, his team in action tonight. Tied for first at the beginning of the night, going into play. How would that end up tonight, though? Let's check out some of the action. Portage. Chesterton, this was still close. I heard uh, you guys coming in, and uh, what did he have? Three TDs and a TD pass? Today? Three TDs and a TD pass, yeah. that's right. And how many yards? He 290 up. something, was it? Exactly. Man. But There's he's become more than one dimensional this year, Tommy. And that's the important part. You got to have more guys put points on the board outside of Macia when he's hit. And that's happening so far the past two or three weeks. Well, he threw a touchdown to Angel Sanchez. Right. And, uh, you know, last week it was Greg Millage on right. the receiver spot. Right. He's got more than one so, target now. Yes, he does. Yeah, he's last week. Football. Last week he threw five passes all completed to Millage. So, For 138 38 exactly. yards. Yep. This week, he hits Angel uh, Sanchez. And look at that. Just what opens up the offense so well. Yeah. Some of the 290 right there. He, yep. is a, he is tough to handle. Yeah, with all due respect to Fred Winston, that is your player of the year right now. Right now. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any question. I yeah. mean, he's been healthy. He's done it every week. Um, I, I mean, he's he's been something else really I mean what a, a tremendous year he's had to this point uh, here's Chester to coming back though they ran some of the ball themselves yeah they did and I'll tell you this I love it when a high school team is down and yet they come back and make a game of it they Boom Roy did that today you have to respect the team that does that they don't quit now Tommy oh here's a is here's this a fumble. fumble return yep how come you said Tommy and fumble in the okay, same sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well I want to get back to I, don't get, I want to just touch on what we talked about last week. I love these unis, too. But, oh, uh, but okay. Portage had the new unis last yeah. last, uh, last, last week. week. Well, they had to th they had, it was what? They were honoring the 77 team tonight. Uh -huh. so, yes. Mm -hmm. So they had to go back to a little Portage red there you instead go. of the uh, Sterling Lawrence right here reversing his field. He's He's been seeing a little bit too much of uh, Cohen for the Bears there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're really putting down the Bears tonight. I'm telling you. And I'm a Steelers fan. I'm really looking forward to this weekend. There's Maceo running for more yardage. 
See, I don't want to talk about that Portage 77 team because they broke my heart when they beat uh, my undefeated Maribel Pirates in the second Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Maribel was supposed to win back-to-back -back state titles there. Hmm. And uh, Portage beat them on a 3 nothing. Wasn't there a run of Duneland Conference teams yeah, like Valpo, three and five yeah, years? Valpo, yeah, Maribel, Portage, mm -hmm. three Exactly, yep. Yeah. 31-21, Portage by 10, and they are now alone in first place in the deck. Okay, you want to do a little promotion here? That's uh, a Portage yeah, and Valparaiso a, play I think one another. it's called a segue. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Did Michigan City lose two to the deck, in the deck? They lost to Valpo. That's yeah. what. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's so what. Yeah. Portage hasn't lost any. Right, that's right. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's, okay. Let's, right. Move, let's move to... Uh, Let's move to CP. Valpo and CP tonight. And the Vikings on quarterback number three. Which oh, has got to be, which is really rough. That is tough. That is. And now, no, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. A young quarterback uh, steps in. Opperman did a pretty good job, but boy, the turnovers in, in a very short span, like two minutes, just turned this whole game around. Yeah, and the kid that was the number two quarterback was also the team safety, so he's not there. And you're at Crown Point. Crown Point's a good football team. I know they had a tough week last week, but you see what you see right here. Crown Point giving them a game tonight. Trenton Pottis with a catch there. We've seen Jesse Harper running the football. And Jesse might be the guy for the next week or so. All right, we have, we have some irony here tonight. We have a couple of cousins tonight that score touchdowns against each other. Hmm. Peyton Krutz for Valpo, whose father is Mike, the principal of Maryville, and I, I don't know if his dad gets to see him play much because he's usually at the Maryville's games, but his cousin, Sam Krutz, got the pick six for Crown Point in the second half, which I don't oh, think we've got. Wow. <laughs> and yet another pick six. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hats off to Crown Point tonight. That's right. Their defense stepped up and uh, you know, got them on the board a couple of times. Bounced back from wow. the portage loss. That's Sam right. Bernardi with the catch there. And I tell you what, it makes the Duneland Conference race all the more entertaining. Yes, Go ahead, is. pick a team, any team. Well, I think I think Valpo's a little easier to defend when they're on their third, you know, third yeah. quarterback. Right. Obviously, yeah. you've got to you've got to make the third quarterback throw the ball. But you know, the question comes up, if you don't score more than, say, 14 points per game down the road, well, how successful are you going to be come tournament time? But it was Valpo formula. They had, what, a 6 nothing lead at halftime right. mm -hmm. until Crown Point got the running game going. Well, there you go. But Valpo said injuries all across the board Yeah. Uh, as well. Two, like you said, two quarterbacks injured, yeah. safety injured. Some linemen injured. Yeah. That's a good sack right there. Nice toenail sack, if you will. 21-6, the Bulldogs scored in the second half. All 21 of those points uh, had a big, long run by Tyler Gomez and then the pick six by Sam Krutz. And uh, Valpo unable to generate any offense uh, really That's throughout right. the night after that first drive to get him six points. All right, scoreboard time. Across Northwest Indiana, let's go on the board. It was Laporte beating Merrillville, 42 to 20. So new life for the Slicers in the DAC race. Hey, they got Crown Point next week. That'll exactly. be a big game. They still have Portage on the schedule. That's right. So they control their own destiny. Michigan City big, 56-14. The Wolves host Portage next Friday night. I'm already looking ahead to that Lowell Griffith sectional game. 27 nothing. Lowell shuts out Highland. That defense for Lowell, still getting it done. Elsewhere, the Brickies are starting to roll, but they're in the opposite 4A sectional. 34-21 for the Bricks over KV. And there is the flat-out story of the night on homecoming, the Clark Pioneers and their three-year, 27-game losing streak, 28-21 for Clark. No score in on Hammond and the side. Where's your people, Tom? Um, Roosevelt, Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> Love West Side. I but... you got contacts all through. Well, yeah, but I don't talk to them during the football season. <laughs> <laughs> okay, only hoops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Then we talk about it. <laughs> Elsewhere on the board. I think that's it. No, nope. nope. we got, got Morton. Uh, Morton over Gavitt. 26. I, I, I caught a little of my guy Mike Carey. He was a little ticked off tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just a little. <laughs> 
<laughs> We've turned the ball over too many times. Yeah, yep, exactly. 26 to 6, Morton over Gavin. Okay, um, Matt just uh, explodes on the board yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. Harris Boy. Hernandez. Yeah. Had a, another big night, right? And, yeah, and Kobe uh, Snook, uh, the quarterback, had a huge night. And I tell you what, when's the last time Clark and Calumet won on the same night? And River Forest. And River, yeah. that's right, there you <laughs> go. Look yeah. at that score, 52 yeah, to 6. Exactly. Wow. Go ahead, boys. It hasn't happened at least until 2014. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wheeler, 26-18 over South Central. I think somebody said last night that was going to be turnovers at the side. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think the red check mark was undefeated. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I, so. I told you he was going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and we, you know, we looked, there was some, a lot of upsets tonight. Yes, there were. Yeah. Yeah, we talked last night that it looked like a 20 and 0 night for you. I guess That's not. Right. <laughs> I guess not. That's for sure. Well, wait a minute. Let's go by last week. Somebody picked against Roosevelt. Yeah, all right. So, yes, yeah, so if we're going to bury him, let me get a shot. There you go. <laughs> Culver wins. Here's some more scores. Bowman wins over Tinley. Uh, we're still looking for the Judson score, the North Newton score. We're going to get a timeout. We'll come back. We'll have our game of the night, and maybe we'll update some of those scores right after this on PFR scoreboard. For more information on everything prep football, visit us on Facebook or on Twitter at PFR Sports. All right, we are back on PFR School Board, and our game of the night was Griffith and Boone Grove. And um, I think we're finding out 4A Griffith could be one of the best 4A teams in the state. Yeah, yeah. there's no doubt about that. I, they've got so much offensive ability and their defense. I mean, they actually gave up points tonight. That was the first time in, what, four weeks? In the month, <laughs> in the month. of September, exactly. And Boone Grove is a good team, but they're a good 2A team. Yes. Yeah. And I think we saw the depth. We were wondering how Boone Grove was going to handle their, the speed of Griffith, but uh, it was too much for them tonight. Let's check out some of the highlights from our game of the night from over at Valpo High, which is uh, where Boone Grove plays their home games. And... Uh, you talked about Gaddafi Coleman last night, and uh, I think he delivered a little for you. Oh, tonight. yeah, he delivered a lot. He uh, played very, very well, but this, this is a beautiful run here. And here's a guy that hasn't been an offensive force the last few weeks. I think he did okay tonight offensively. Somebody give him the get somebody get the angle on defense. I don't think yeah. the angle would have helped. No, it wouldn't have helped, man. You had to have speed with angle. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a linebacker defensively. Yeah. Nice sack by the Panther uh, defense. There's Fred Winston with a nice run. They got a lot, speaking of a lot of weapons, Whiting is starting to develop a lot of weapons. Man, Griffith has got weapons. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And you know, if it weren't for the quarterback at Portage, Fred Winston would be an MVP candidate because he's having himself a pretty good season. He had four touchdowns tonight. Does mm -hmm. Griffith get to not show anything now? playing the balance of their schedule, which are going to be heavily favored in all their games. We talked to go vanilla offensively? Yeah, I mean, their basic stuff should be enough, really, to get them home undefeated until the postseason. Probably, yeah. Is that a better strategy than simply instilling fear in your opponents? <laughs> well, I, they're still doing that. I think they're still doing that. They could go vanilla and still put four <laughs> points on the board. Vanilla's still good. Yeah. <laughs> Really? <laughs> if it's a milkshake or ice cream, at least. But, uh, I prefer strawberry. <laughs> kudos to Boone Grove tonight for staying in it, in it and playing hard. And boy, yes. Brandon Van got hit there. He's going to fill that one tonight and tomorrow. And you know, you mentioned about how Boone Grove late in the game made a run. I mentioned this earlier. I'll say it again. I love it when high school teams don't give up. Those oh, yeah, are the kind of kids you yes. want that's, on your team. That's, how, that's a beautiful throw. That's yeah. a beautiful throw. That that's, a, how, that's how uh, programs are built. That's right. Yeah. By not, you know, by not, uh, not giving up and, and playing hard to the end. And you got to have those things. I was impressed with your interview last night with Coach Mikulski. Yeah. I thought uh, that program's going in the right, the right direction again. Two A against four A. 
Uh, but Boone Grove has had some great wins this year already over Whiting, mm -hmm. uh, of course, and then last week over Hanover, 55 to 12. Griffith is just that good. Yes, Their speed yeah. too yeah. much. A big, I mean, and, and Coach Gepper told us they're one of the smaller 4A schools uh, in the, in the in the state. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. They got big time 4A oh, talent. They sure yeah, they need a field, and they need more people coming out for football. They have Boom to have Grove. that home field, Boom Grove, Boom, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. They need a football field. We know Griffith has one. There's yeah. one of the best ones in the, on the planet. But Boom Grove just needs their own home field, hint, hint, and some more kids coming out for the program. Well, I, I yeah, I, and I mean, what, what, what year is this for them? Is it the fifth year? Or? Sixth. Sixth year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're still in the infancy stage, as Coach said last night, but uh, you keep beating Whiting in Hanover, and, yeah. having, and I'm sure they had a huge crowd tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that program's headed in the right direction. And uh, yeah, because he said they're, you can see on these highlights, their line is small. Yeah. But uh, you know, got to get some weight room conditioning program, got to get more guys out. But those are common themes even for the big schools. And you know, imagine facing a Griffiths team undersized. You know you're overmatched as it is, and then you look at the linemen for Griffiths who are all good sized, very talented, very, very tough well, situation. I, I think. Plus, they've got a new coach, Boone, and, and you know, it's going to take them. I want to see where this program's at in a couple years. Yeah. Well, it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, they'll uh, have a field by then. Yeah, because I think, you know, look, it's taken Coach Gepper three years to get this thing going, and now they're just a well oiled machine right now. Yeah, and let's face it, Griffith was not doing well in, when Gepper got right. there. Right. Exactly. They were struggling, That's and right. all of a sudden, it, it, didn't even, it actually took them two years. This is the yep. second year. Yeah. that uh, he's got this football program to the point and, that and we're sitting back and going, wow. Griffith's uh, athletic department and their parent football community has done an outstanding job yes. of helping build that program yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, so kudos to them. Um, and they're, you know, I, I'll be shocked if they don't have a deep run this year into the postseason. As a matter of fact, Wayne even said they would do well in the Dunland Conference. Yeah, I, well, this year they definitely yes. would. Yeah. Yes. They'd be yeah. favored in most of their games, I think, yeah, you probably. know. You know, they were played toe to toe with uh, Michigan City. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it could have won that game. Oh, easily, yeah. One point game. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think they had some turnovers as well. Right. But, uh, yeah, this year they definitely would could play, you know, with uh, in the Doolin as well. Although I'd still like to see him play in Drain and Munster. Oh, yeah, we discussed that last <laughs> week. <laughs> He's not going to let him go, is he? They're going to play Lowell. Yeah. Uh, they're on a collision course to play Lowell. They could, but, yeah, they like, could play Hobart yeah. as well in the regional. Yeah. Of, but uh, why do we have to wait that long is what you're saying. Uh, yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. All there right, how about some rapid fire scores for PFR school board tonight? Nice effort from Chesterton, but Portage offensively put a big number on the board, 31-21. The Slicers back in the Doolin race, 42-20. to Michigan City not looking ahead for their big game next week. The Portage, they got things done tonight, 56-14 over LC. Elsewhere, 21-6, there's a shocker tonight. Valpo on their third quarterback, that's tough. 21-6, crown point, 21 unanswered points in the second half. Bounce back with that run game, and uh, they get the upset win at home tonight. Lowell shuts out Highland, 27-0. KV down to Hobart. The Brickies are uh, rolling as well now. Uh, after their uh, OT win last week against Dan Duran. Elsewhere, guys, the story of the night in the middle of the screen there. 27 games in three years is a long time. Wow, that yeah. is fantastic. We talked to their correspondent, who is also the PA guy there. Yeah, I saw You can hear the oh, emotion yeah. in his should, voice. You should be. Yeah. I mean, Wayne, you, you, you know, you can't. From a coaching aspect, you can't BS kids today. That's right. Uh, they need some kind of positive feedback on what, on what they're doing. That's uh, right. It's hard to sell three years of losing to a football team. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, this is going to go light years for their team. Hopefully, yes. Uh, hopefully, this increases the number of kids that actually come out. And it was beautiful that it was on homecoming day. Yeah, that, well, that it was. That was beautiful. Because uh, I'm sure this, this, a lot of the student body didn't maybe think that they were going to win tonight. Right. Let me ask Wayne one quickie question. Do you think you might draw some kids this late in the season to come out playing football after this? It's kind of late now. You know, you, have, you only have, what, three games left yeah. for the season. But it certainly bodes well for next year. Okay. Well, and they still have, uh, I think they still have some winnable games on their schedule. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Westside's one of them. 
And I think they like Lake Station, maybe. Right? Yeah. Right? Or no? Did they play Lake Station? Okay, I'm not sure about Lake Station. Maybe not Lake Station, but I, yeah. I thought they... Westside. Westside? Okay. I think they do that. Okay. Yeah, they do have Westside. Elsewhere on the board, uh, the red check mark 2-0 tonight, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. <laughs> That's what the folks were staying up to hear. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, okay. that's what I'm Well, here. they weren't staying up to hear what my record was. Huh? <laughs> no. No, because uh, it was supposed to be an easy week for you. I know. Not, well, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were feeling that way as well. 19 0 Knox over LaVille. Didn't get that North Judson score. Bowman wins again. And give them credit, they got blasted by Roosevelt last week. They did. Week. That's right. I mean, I was shocked to see that, but they bounced back tonight. Griffith Big over Boone Grove 55 to 12. Join us Thursday for another edition of PFR on Lakeshore PBS. Probably looking at Michigan City and Portage next right. week. Right, huh? game of the week, I would think Road so. Trip. Okay, uh, all right, we'll see you Thursday night on PFR. Good night. Program support comes from NIPSCO. Honey, who is this guy? Oh, that's Frank. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Honey, why is Frank in our bedroom? He's showing us ways to save money. Plus, he'll even help us install LED bulbs and new shower heads. Oh, well, he is leaving before I shower, though, right? To schedule an energy assessment and learn more about energy usage, visit nipsco.com. Frank, could you hand me a towel?